Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the complex stomach of ruminants, so let's get right into it. The complex stomach in ruminants is made out of four major parts. We have the rumen, the reticulum, omasum, and the abomasum. The main difference between these four parts of the, the ruminating stomach is that these three, the rumen, reticulum, and omasum, are non-glandular. What this means is that they're going to have glands, but these glands are producing mucus, not digestive enzymes. The abomasum, on the other hand, this is glandular. And this is much more similar to the type of stomach that we as uh, omnivores, us humans, have. Or what you'll see in the stomach of a dog, cow, pig, cat. These are all going to have a glandular stomach. And this abomasum in ruminants is the most similar to what we're familiar with. But the other parts, we're going to really talk about the importance of these guys and, and really how the whole complex stomach of the ruminating animals works to achieve a digestible food. So let me just bring over a picture of the rumen that I drew a little earlier. I thought it would save some time not having to draw it all while I'm recording. And we'll use this as the complex stomach of ruminants. And now I'll start to label really what we're looking at here. So number one, the rumen. This whole region that I'll put in red for now is the rumen. Okay, so all of this is all rumen. Even this, this is all rumen probably too. All of this. So the rumen you can see is quite extensive. It's full of papilla that are little projections of the mucosal lining inside of the rumen. And these papilla, the main job for these guys is to A, increase surface area. So the rumen, the surface area is actually increased by sevenfold when we have these little ruminal papilla inside. And the other function of the rumen is it's really this giant sack of bacteria that's sitting there working with the, the animal in a symbiotic relationship to digest these really difficult or indigestible uh, foods that they're eating. So the, the grass that we see, the straw, the hay, the silage, these are really inaccessible nutrients that the animals are relying on. So they need to eat a lot of it and they need help to digest it. So that's where the bacteria that's actually going to be sitting in the rumen, the reticulum, all of the stomach, essentially, there's going to be a bacteria, but the majority of it is going to be in the rumen and what we'll see next, the reticulum and the omasum. So this right here, we'll say this is all rumen, okay? And the other main function of the rumen is to absorb a lot of water. So the rumen is going to be absorbing water. It's also going to be absorbing the uh, any kind of vitamin K or vitamin B that the bacteria are going to be releasing out from these really indigestible foods that they're actually ingesting. Okay, so this is the rumen. The next part, I'll put in blue, is going to be called the reticulum. Okay, so this is the reticulum. This whole region here is going to be reticulum. It's very similar to the rumen that I was just discussing as far as the function is concerned. But the reticulum, what's a little different here is that the cells in the mucosal lining are going to be arranged in these honeycomb shape cristae, or these little packs of cells that are arranged in these hexagonal formations. But what they're going to have inside of these hexagonal formations is tiny papilla, oops, tiny papilla, just like what we saw inside of the rumen. So that's essentially what the little papillas look like. And the rumen would have a lot of these all over as well, these little papillas. So that's the reticulum. The next part we'll look at is the omasum, and that's right here. It's the circular sac that we have, and we'll put this in green. The omasum is a little different than the other rumen and reticulum in that the omasum doesn't, I mean, it has papilla, but the papilla are arranged on these really long, stringy folds of the mucosal lining. 
So in the rumen, it's relatively flat compared to inside of the omasum. The rumen has a lot of folds, but the omasum has these really long stringy folds. The reticulum, it has, uh, it's different, uh, like I just mentioned, than the omasum in that it has these honeycomb types of cristae. And uh, I'll just write it down here as well. The cristae that we see in the omasum, those are called Crista reticuli, because they're in the reticulum. So next, we're going to move out of the omasum and into the abomasum. Like I said, this is the true stomach. This part is going to have gastric glands secreting enzymes, secreting hydrochloric acid to increase the acidity of the stomach. This is all going to be in the abomasum. And the food eventually is going to leave the abomasum and enter into the small intestine. Similar to the other video when I showed the breakdown of the simple stomach and the different compartments, the abomasum is also going to have a cardiac region. Let's just kind of show a light outline here. It's also going to have a fundus, pylorus, uh, sorry, corpus, and then the pylorus somewhere around here. So we'll also have four different compartments, just like in the simple stomach, but uh, the the length or the, the amount of space that these compartments are taking up might be a little bit different compared to the stomach of the carnivore. So this is, in general, the uh, basically the the layout that we have for the complex stomach of ruminants. So... What I'm going to do now, I'll take brown, we'll pick this, they call it gold, but to me it looks more brown. And we'll draw a little picture of how the food is going to work its way around the stomach as basically it, it, it gets ingested and gets broken down by the bacteria and the muscles inside of this large complex stomach. So the food is going to come in through the esophagus. Okay, so this will be the esophagus and incoming food with food. Great. Food's going to come in. It's not going to go into the reticulum directly. It's actually going to go straight into the rumen. Let me maybe pick the biggest that we have for the gold color. So the food's going to come in into the esophagus and it's going to enter the rumen. Inside the rumen we're going to have all sorts of smooth muscle surrounding the walls of the rumen as well as the reticulum. Really the entire complex stomach is surrounded in these smooth muscles but the role of the smooth muscles here is that they're going to squeeze and mix this food in the rumen that just came in and mix it all up with the bacteria so they can start digestion, mix it up with the mucus, and eventually the food is going to get all mixed up with the contents of the rumen and make its way back towards the reticulum. So now we're in the reticulum. What's gonna happen here is that the reticulum is going to further digest the food, absorb as much water and vitamins as possible, and make her way into the omasum. The omasum is the main part that is responsible for getting the rest of the water out. Whatever the rumen and the reticulum wasn't able to remove, the omasum is going to remove that. Okay. Finally, the food's going to enter into the real stomach. And when it gets into the real stomach, it's going to get further broken down by these gastric enzymes and finally, finally make its way out the stomach and into the small intestine. Okay, so that's essentially the path the food takes. It's going to come in from the esophagus, make its way into the rumen, spend a lot of time in the rumen, then it's going to go to the reticulum, the omasum finally, and then out into the abomasum where the, the last part of the stomach digestion will occur and into the intestine for further digestion. Now, when we talk about ruminants in general, What's important to remember is that what really is special about ruminants is that these animals require remastication. So 
What that means is that they're going to chew their food. It's so indigestible that they need to chew it, fit it into the stomach, have the bacteria help break the food down. And then they're going to regurgitate that food back into their mouth where they're going to chew it up a little bit more with the help of this bacteria that's aided the process or made it more easy to gain access to nutrients. So now they're going to chew up that food again and then swallow it and another round of bacterial digestion. The food might even be regurgitated again into the esophagus uh, for another round of mastication or it's going to finally make its way past the rumen, past the reticulum even, and into the omasum. The rumen and reticulum, like I had mentioned earlier, like they are very intimately related to one another. So together with the contents of the rumen and the reticulum, the smooth muscles and the walls of these compartments are going to squeeze and push food in towards the mouth where the regurgitation can actually occur. What's important to, to take note of with the ruminant species is that they don't actually have a muscle that we were talking about in the simple stomach. They don't have a muscle here. Oops. They don't have a muscle here, part of the esophagus, where we would called this the cardiac sphincter muscle. They don't have this, and for good reason, because they want food to be able to go back up into the mouth for further digestion. If they had this cardiac sphincter muscle, it would avoid the ability to easily bring food back up the esophagus. So in ruminants, we don't have this, this muscle here. And I guess the last thing I'll point out is really just to give us some context for, for direction, maybe I should have done this first, is basically, I'll erase some of this here. When we're looking at this large rumen, what we're really looking at, sorry, I keep calling it a, the rumen, but it's the complex stomach of ruminants. What we're looking at here is the, the left side of, sorry, the, the right side, not the left side. Even I sometimes get it a little confused. So this is the right lateral view. This is a right lateral view, which means that all these organs or the compartments that we're seeing here uh, on this diagram, these are all going to be facing the, the visceral organs, or this is the visceral face of the complex stomach. So in a little diagram, maybe I can show if this, if you can imagine this is the back, end of an animal okay and then the head would be up here great and this is some hair let's say this is a like a bushy haired cow let's just say that so the rumen if this is the back end and if we could draw where it would generally be the rumen would take up this left hand space in the stomach or sorry in the abdominal cavity and it's always going to be on the left side of the abdominal cavity. This visceral side, where it would just be organ and not occupied by rumen, this would be where we see the abomasum here. So this part is actually going to be right there, as far as our diagram is concerned. So that kind of gives us a little bit of orientation, but otherwise, where we have the esophagus right here. This is the cranial side. This is going to be the caudal side, closest to the tail. Dorsal, because it's closest to the vertebrae, and ventral, closest to the, the front of the stomach or the, the floor really and that kind of helps put everything into perspective i i believe uh, what we're going to do in the next video i'm going to talk about general summary of what we talked about here uh, as well as the, the simple stomach but as well we're going to introduce the stomach of the pig and the, the horse 
And then in the future videos, we're going to talk about the digestive system further. So looking at the small intestines and the large intestines.